welcome back, everybody, to the Who's Your Band podcast. Uh, we are excited today. We're, oh, listen, every time we do the show, it's exciting, it's fun. Um, I hope you guys are listening and and subscribing and sharing and, and all that cool stuff. But today, joining my co-host, Sean Morton. Let me introduce Sean. Sean, how are you? Oh, fantastic, Jeffrey. What's going on? I haven't watched the news in about nine months. <laughs> yeah, not, not much is going on in the world uh, these days. It's, it's been basically been pretty boring. It's been a very boring no news cycle. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been the same old, same old. A lot of mundane stuff going on. I think but, a lot um, of Asians are moving into my town. I see everybody wearing masks. <laughs> Don't, do not laugh. Just, just let that hang there. That's what that joke is. <laughs> that is fucking unbelievable. Um, but speaking of unbelievable, we have the host of the High Society Radio Show. Give it up for our guest today, Mr. Bronx Johnny. Gentlemen, pleasure to be here. Been mean to have you on, brother. I've been mean to have you uh, on. I, wa I watch a show. I like the show a lot because it's, ba it's basically just like three dudes who talk about what's going on in the world. And, you know, we are typically a music podcast. Right. But we have different people on all the time. We have, you know, lots of comedians. Every week we have a comedian on. We always have, we have some huge musicians that have been on. We've had politicians that have been on. We've had Good. artists. We've had everything. Actors. Actors. Tons of actors, too. But I think this week is important because I want to have another radio guy on. All right. Because Appreciate that. If, I've never been called that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, defendant shit like that, yeah, but never uh, radio host. That's nice. Well, Thank you. well you are, Thanks, Johnny. You, I'm the only guy who Sean doesn't compliment. Okay. Oh, yeah, so I'll find that out in the next hour, likes. Johnny. <laughs> but I think this is an important episode because you know we we always touch on music at some point. Some episodes are an hour's worth of music. Some episodes are literally fucking thirty seconds of music. <laughs> yeah, but. You know, we've we've kind of steered the ship a little bit as far as, you know, not always pigeonholing it to music. And I think it's really important this week because this has basically been one of the most fucked up weeks in our country's history. Yeah, it, it depends how you look at it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's fucked up just yet, because to be at, at the end of the day, whoever wins, nobody. Well, how does your life actually change? It isn't like, yeah, sure. Trump can fuck you over a little bit more. Or it might just be business as usual. It's fucking crazy. But Joe could just business as usual. Like, you never really get it. I've, I've always been paycheck to paycheck. I don't see anybody changing that right now. I mean, yeah. if you look at what's going on. Yeah. Is there any, is there any, who would you say is the clear cut loser in all this? I have an opinion, but I want to know what you guys think. Who do you think is the clear-cut loser? Who do you think, no matter who wins, whether it's Trump, Biden, th this is going to be the loser of the group? Well, I think there's there's two losers in this in this aspect. I mean, right now, so let's just break let's just break it down for people. It's Thursday. Uh, it's four o'clock. Yeah. So right now, there's six states that are still kind of up in the air, and the first loser, I believe, are the polling people. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I believe I believe what? this is I, well. I believe now that this is going to be a uh, a faction of our society that is going to be dead, yeah. because these polls are ridiculous. These polls are not accurate. They are definitely swayed in one direction or the other. And the second loser, I hate to say this, is going to be Donald Trump, because he is. Uh, no matter which way you look at it, he is probably going to lose this election, and. I'm okay with it. I'm not okay with it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter about my political belief about it. No. The way he's handling everything right now is a disgrace. He's actually trying to sue states yeah. where the voting is not even finished yet. And to me, that is a sign of a very desperate uh, person. Uh. I what do you think, you, Johnny? I agree with you to a point. I don't like how he's handling it. I get why you'd be pissed. Like, you're right there. Everything's like, ah, shit, yeah. And it just starts raining shit on you. Like, nobody likes it. But I think that even if he wins, I think the biggest loser is probably Joe Biden. Because the election... Why you say that? That's interesting. Because the, the election's a lot closer than what everybody said it was going to be. And you thought, like, yo, he's going to fucking sweep and this and that third. But as close as this election's been, and then, like I assumed with all these mail-in votes, it was all Democrats and shit. It was more, it's kind of been mixed, which is kind of good. It shows the system works. 
But, <clears throat> excuse me, I think Joe didn't get the, the landslide victory needed. It's so fucking close. Like, you're going to go to court over this shit. And it's not a blue wave. There's no blue wave. And, like, it, it came down to, yo, less of two evils is what it feels like right now with this election. The, the country was like, yo, this, and it's a record turnout, too, so. Right. It, it's still I kind felt, of fucked, I, felt I think. the same way uh, uh, that, that you did with, with the second thing you said there. Um, if I'm going to go with a loser, I think the, the overwhelming loser is the media. I think no matter who wins or who loses, I think credibility on on and the media side is kaput. I think uh, uh, stations like MSNBC, Fox News, CNN, who's going to watch it anymore? Who's going to care? You know, uh, Trump was 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 the driving force between all of them. He was either the antagonist or the the protagonist on yeah. on on whichever uh, show that you look at. I'm not even going to refer to them as news. Um, I think. I think it's good. I mean, I don't think it's, what I think is good is that people did come out and vote. And you're seeing people, you know, as young as high school kids to as, as to the older people, everyone's involved in politics. I think that's mm -hmm. a good thing. And I kind of disagree with Sean with Donald Trump losing because I think if they spin it as he, the election was stolen from him, whether it's right or wrong, or whether yeah. there's accuracy or not, it's remember, it's about perception. I really think they're building Trump up to be a martyr. And I think what it does yeah. do is it really energizes that base and that base isn't gonna go away anytime soon. Well, you, you look at the numbers too that he pulled out, he's got more voters this time than he did in 2016. So his base is here to stay. So now you gotta see if like you vote Republican, how does your party change? Do you cater to them? Do you try to move away? And I don't think you can move away because what they punch out like 68 million votes. He barely lost the popular vote this time. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's, only, he's only about 3 million behind the popular vote. This yeah. Time. I thought that's, he would. That's what he lost last time too. Yeah. I thought he was going to get like the way it made it sound. It was going to be like at least an eight point loss at least. So it's like, shit, maybe I should have taken some, some of those better knives that they had up earlier this week. It yeah, was like, right. yeah, man. Could have come. Interesting. One thing I saw, I will tell you one thing that I've seen over the past couple nights is I don't mm. keep my television focused on one channel. Yeah. I, I am that person who will bounce from Fox to CNN to MSNBC. And I do that. And I make sure I give each uh, format equal time because I like to see the differences in how they're spinning things and how they're judging it. And I will tell you that very early on, Fox News has really not been a hundred percent on the Trump train. Yeah. They they're have the only, been more they're the only they, ones that called Arizona for him. They're still yes. the only ones that've only called Arizona. Well, the, the, they because they, they follow the uh, AP. That, right. they're the, that wow. was the only ones. And to this point right now, Arizona still hasn't been been called, and there's still an outside possibility that Arizona could flip. Yes. Yeah, it's that it's a toss because like everybody keeps saying PA. And he's making ground, but it's like, yo, I, I don't know how you drop from 600,000 from Tuesday to Thursday. It's like a... It's, it's at 100, even... 111,000 right now. But yeah, that, that, that a dip. Well, it comes down to, you know, they the two very different strategies on these on these parts. You know, Biden and the, and the Democratic Party have been pushing, be safe, vote early, vote yeah. from home, send your ballot in. And Trump's side has been saying, fuck masks, go in person and vote. <laughs> so if you see the so if you see the trends, they had a tremendous amount of uh, in person voting. If you look at Ohio, for example, Ohio, Biden had a 19 percent lead in Ohio. And I said right away, that's going to change very, very quickly. And yeah. it changed over the span of eight hours where, you know, Trump wound up getting the, getting the state because they did come out in droves and vote in person. Mm. But it, on the flip side, it's also changing things for Biden because all of these city, all of these uh, states and counties are actually picking up the uh, mail-in votes last and they're counting yeah. them last. So when you're seeing this huge resurgence of Biden uh, votes, it's because of the mail-in voting. And now because of the paranoia on the right side too, it's making it look like a fix that all these votes were just dumped off because he was so close in the election that yeah. they're trying to fix the vote. Don't you think, just do you think you think uh, uh, counting the votes, just doing it transparently would, would go a long way in instilling confidence? 
Well, they got cameras in there. Like, I, I know Philly has them, and I think Nevada got them in there. I don't know. Every, like, don't you think every state should have them? If you're going to count these votes, they should be done out in the open where everybody could see. Because you're hearing uh, stories. And, you again, you don't know what's fake news or not. But they're yeah. putting up a, a newspaper on windows and guys are being ordered out of out of rooms. I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you make of that? Well, for me, I mean, it's uh, this comes back to having the the difference in states, how every state is individual. Yeah. So, I mean, unless they there's the only way to fix that would be if they had two separate ballots for every state and they had just a presidential ballot and then they had a regular ballot for congressional and for Senate and for House and local. You know, that way you can say all the presidential ballots get sent to one place. But again, that's. You can't do that because each state governs himself. Yeah, that's true. You know, the other thing uh, that was interesting, it was something that you said, Johnny, that made me uh, uh, think about this as well, is how he did with certain demographics. Yeah. And from between 2016 and 2020, he really, really picked up a lot of Hispanic voters and and, uh, (laughs) and Blacks. And he wound up, you know, if he loses, what's going to wind up killing him is suburban white women. Women hate sure. him. Yeah, uh, I don't know how you fix that though. Like it's the way he talks. That's you know? exactly so, it. That's yeah. it. Like, that's so it. Like they voted for him the last time. It didn't work this time. But look, uh, Latinos and uh, they won in Florida. You you had Cubans, Venezuelans, and evangelical Puerto Ricans, which I didn't know was a thing till today. Is a thing. <laughs> so it's like, all right. <laughs> I well, think- I, I think the Hispanic vote is because when you look at the, the demographic, like in Florida, yeah. Hispanics are generally hardworking people who yeah. want the American dream, who are very into opening their own businesses yeah, and being self-reliant and self resi- and, and self, uh, you know, taking care of their own. So they're going to get that vote from him. But yeah, but think- he did a good job too in Florida of painting Joe Biden to be a socialist. I have my I have my family in Ecuador, so you know they hit you up and like, oh hey, what's going on over in your country? You guys gonna have a military coup? Like we don't do that here. I'm fine, <laughs> but I'm like, he's like, no, but wait, man, that's socialist. Like which one's the socialist? Wait, and he's like, oh Joe Biden. Like who told you that? I'm like oh the the orange guy was on TV saying that. I was like, nah, dude, he's not a socialist. He's got some weird ideas and shit, but I don't think he's a socialist. But that's how you sell it. You scare them, like, especially if they're from Cuba, you sell them that shit. You scare, you scare them, like, oh, I'm not voting for that. Mm-hmm. And there you go. It's, it's all Jedi mind tricks. It's all yeah, it is. It's good morning. He's a marketing guy. He's, he sells also, you houses and shit. Also, Biden's been around for a long time. Yeah, you know, 47 he, years, right? You're right. He's, he, he's, not, he's not a crazy left winger, you know? He, no. is, he, is, he is somewhat moderate. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing, I mean, people just kind of pump the brakes for a second, too. You know, the, the Senate is Republican. The uh, the uh, judicial branch is still Republican conservative. The House is Democratic, and if Biden you know holds on and wins, he you know the uh, the White House is Democratic. Isn't that the perfect blend? Of it actually is. Balances? No, it really is without question because everybody has to be accountable. So you know the House is 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 very left is very left right. So then the Senate is supposed to balance that out. Which and then, does. right. So I no, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, I, I think that if the Democrats won the Senate and then Biden won the presidency, I think it'd be a very, I think you'd see a lot more uh, craziness going on. I don't think that's ever good for America. I don't think if, if it would have been the other way where Trump would have won and then, then, the, then the House would have flipped and it would have all been Republican. I don't think that's good for America. I think you need to have you know, fractioning parties. And I think everyone needs to kind of compromise because our country is based on compromise. The constitution is based on compromise. And I think, you know, we need to kind of like play nice, but I think there is agendas. And I think an interesting agenda is what happens in the house, because now there's a movement to get Nancy Pelosi, remove her as speaker of the house. And then who do you put in? And is the devil, you know, better than the devil that you don't. Oh, man, that's a tough because uh, she really let me down with the stimulus check. She could have uh, stepped up and handled that a little bit better. Like sometimes you got to make a deal when it's said like a lot of people, especially out here in New York, they lost a lot of businesses. And, I agree you know, with you 100%. Oh, yeah. It's hard shit. Like uh, she's got a nice rack. I'll give her that lady. Hey, she's, she's got a yeah, nice rack. Okay. Mind? I can't believe you said that. <laughs> she's got a nice rack. 
I, no, listen, I, bu- I've been busting my friend's balls for oh. months about Nancy Pelosi's rack, and he got physically sick when I mentioned it. And then, <laughs> nah, dude, you no, did. but here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's a whole Reddit subculture dedicated to Nancy Pelosi's tits. No, they nice. Yes, awesome. there is. is There's a titled, whole. Why? Is it titled, I don't know. Is it titled Dems Titty? <laughs> it'd be nice i'd check that I, out it's the truth I, and i said i kept saying to him look yo for an 80 year old broad man she's got a good rack and he would give me like the fucking puke emoji every time i would send it <laughs> and then like four hours later he goes i can't fucking believe this and he sends me this whole reddit page of all screenshots of fucking pelosi's tits in different outfits it's out there it's scary and it's out there okay I'm saying, have- like, let's say jeff she comes up to you you need she needs a bill no. proposed right she no. got a nice, a nice little V-neck and no, she's, she's all in gross. your face. No. But it's still, t- hey, tits, is tits. I, no. tits don't have a face. He is old. Some tits no. are healthy, though. I don't even see stretch marks on them. Are you nuts? You no, guys are, look good. I'm holding in my vomit. You guys are uh, uh, um, unbelievable. You're nuts. They look like a nice Ziploc bag of sand. They got a nice uh, <laughs> consistency to them. But, 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 but let's talk about something more more important. Would you, <laughs> would you, would you rather, okay, Kamala Harris or uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? Oh, Kamala Harris. I can't stand the OC. Yeah, I go I go Kamala too. And uh interesting. Wow. Yeah. Uh wow. AOC's got that crazy eye look. Like yeah. if you say something wrong, she's biting your dick off. She's very sensitive. She's too high strung for me. Yeah, a lot of there's a lot of emotional uh a, a yeah. lot of emotion in that one. So I, I I gotta take that away. Plus, you know that you know Kamala will do whatever she needs to do to get the job, you know. And I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she can't be mad at that. She's fifty five years old. Is she is really? That, yeah. She's not looking at all. No, no way. Yeah, I think she's 55. No, mm-hmm. I, I, I think you might be wrong on I that. I hope I'm wrong. Maybe she, she I'm going to Google Jeff. it, Jeff. This is my job yeah. on the show. Yeah. Look at see if she's 55. But, but you know, I mean, I, think, I, don't, I don't agree with anything. She's AOC 56 said. years old. Holy shit. She's I good. did not think that in the least bit. Black, Black don't, don't crack. crack. Man. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. She, she, she's, she's got those big... Big old woman tits, you know. There you go. She's twenty four years less than Nancy Pelosi, and you just fucking bashed her. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, but she's but she holds up. They feel nice when you close your eyes. It don't matter how old they are. Just like ah. Oh. <laughs> Listen, Jeff, with Pelosi, man, you break through that scab, you're riding on pus. You know what I mean? <laughs> this has become the most m- misogynistic show we've ever done. <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh man, I'm I'm glad we're tackling the the important. Issue. It really to get three fucking meatheads in a room, yeah. Okay, <laughs> and, and, it go, and it goes from the election to like whose tits do we do, do we like, and we have no shot. I'm at just banging. saying, Nancy Pelosi. I don't know if I don't have a shot. At, I'm happily married. Let me say that, but I think Nancy would throw me a bone. She sees me out there. I'd be her cabana boy, whatever she likes, whatever she. Of course, she throw you a bone. Yeah. You're, you're, you got hair. You're young. You you got you got youth. You got blood. Of course. You, <laughs> what is she a vampire now? <laughs> I don't know. She looks Johnny, kinda... just be careful. I have a bad hip and I have osteoporosis. <laughs> oh, you gotta use three pillows. Use a body pillow on the side of her hip and be fine. And rub that ass a little. Like you'll be fine. How about that relax. Amy Coney uh, Bryant Barrett? Ah, she's scary looking to me. Eh, me too. I, people say she's attractive. I don't say it. Seven uh, kids got a clown car vagina. I know two are adopted. <laughs> but. She's got seven kids. Seven kids. Yeah. Two two adopted black kids. I think from I, from Africa. Haiti, right? Haiti, yeah. Africa. Haiti. Shit, I didn't know it was seven. Damn. I don't know. It's a far plane ride, Jeff. That's all I know. It's not that far. It's the Dominican Republic. That's fucking crazy. That's the what happens when island. you just like when hunting season ends out there in Minnesota. You just fuck a lot, I guess. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Yeah, Jesus they don't get Christ. they don't get Wi Fi out there. <laughs> Adam, can we start this show over again? <laughs> you know, I'm, trying, I'm, show, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to clean up my image a little bit. Yeah, you're not doing it. Yeah, 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 as we can see, a... Johnny. As we can see, <laughs> I'm trying. All right, my wife Listen, is like, you got to tone it down a little. Tell it. Tell us about your radio show. Uh, how said we've been doing it uh, 15 years. It's um, Chris Stanley from the Ron and Fe- uh, Ron and Fe- yep. show. Now the Bennington show on yep. Sirius XM. Uh, I met him when I was interning, and uh, BK Chris, who has his show, uh, he has his own show now too called Johnny. Nelson where were Google. you interning? Uh, at uh, XM back in the day. It was before it was serious. I was at XM for Ron and Fez. Oh, okay. And it was awesome, man. And, uh, I always wanted to do radio, and it was like, yo, let me do an internship. 
I got it. I was real lucky because it's not easy to get. So I went in there. I had an interview with Steve C from ONA back in yep. the day, RIP, buddy. Yeah. And uh, Ben. And I just, I was so nervous. I was like, fuck it. What's the, it's a radio show. What's the worst I can do? I got high before my interview. Had to. I was just nervous as shit. Went in. I don't remember what the fuck they asked. And I don't remember what I said. But I was like, all right, we got a show for you. And I ended up where I did. And uh, Ron's always great. And so is Fez with working with interns. Like, they give you mic time. Say, actually, did you get on the air? Yeah, yeah. I had a bit for a little bit called uh, Sex Travaganza where I would review porns on air. We didn't show up, but oh, we what just a, use audio. What a surprise there, Johnny. <laughs> 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 I can't, why? I can't, I can't see you doing that. <laughs> no, yeah, it was fun. And then uh, me and Stanley, uh, we, we met through the internship there. And then we just like, yo, let's just do a, a podcast. It's been 15 years now. That's great. Now, you obviously had it on different formats too. Where did you start off with the show? Uh, we did, we, the first time we actually ever did anything on the show, we just recorded it at, in the XM studios and then Ron threw us a bone. We did two, uh, two nights of like a satellite, you know, battle of the bands type thing with shows got an hour each. Yeah. We did that for a little bit. Then, uh, we did a uh, Patreon for a little bit and then we went over to more like radio. Shout out to those guys. Those guys are still around. Yep. And then, uh, we went over, uh, we got, we ended up at gas digital working for Ralph and Lewis. Yeah, uh, Jay that, Gomez. Is, that is one of the best uh, platforms out there. Now, I'm not really good friends with with Ralph or Lewis. I mean, I know Lewis and Ralph is a, a very good friend of a very good friend. And uh, sure. it's, a, it's an amazing format. It's an amazing format. They give a platform to a lot of, lot of different shows, too. I mean, if, yeah, you, look yeah. at that, if you look at that uh, platform, they got just... Murderers Row over there, man. Yeah, they have you guys, but they also have, you know, Legion of Skanks. They have uh, the SDR show, which were one of the best shows uh, the best him and Jay kill it all the time. time. I was on there recently with with the guys. We went on there. And it was a great time. And there's so, you know, as far as other people go, I mean, they have musicians have their own shows. Like Jamie Jasta from Hate Breed is on yeah. there. Rob Flynn from Machine Head. Dice was on for a little bit, I believe, too. Right? Yeah, he did. He was out on the West Coast. Uh, I, I'm not sure why. I think it might have been a location thing with him. But he he was doing. Every, everybody does goes there. Whether you stay or you go, you better off for it because you get a new like listening base with it. Oh, sure. So Absolutely. it's good to be over there. And like Ralph and Lewis, like, give a fuck about what they do. It's it's not even a passion project, but a labor of love. And you see it. Like, all the shows, you give it your best. And, you know, it's just a killer lineup. Freaking uh, Zach Amico, too. He just dropped um a documentary. He's oh, wow. Got coming out. Yeah. So that's on, out there, too. That's also going through gas. We've had that's a great. couple of comedy specials. Uh, Lewis yep, has had Lewis one. Lewis is special, yeah. Dave Smith has had one. I don't know if Big J's done one with, with the network. I know he had one on Comedy Central, Netflix. Big J's everywhere, too. Big J Wilkinson. Yeah, he's, he's like dog guy. shit, dude. Uh, he's, he's the best. He I is love everywhere. Him. Yeah, man. And he's like, yo, you mean him. He's a big fucking guy. You think he's going to be a dick to you? Nicest guy you'll ever I don't want to put Jay on the spot like that. Nicest guy you'll ever meet. Yeah, he's I very good, dude. I haven't met any assholes over there at all. Johnny, who have you had on the show? Oh, shit. We had uh, Vernon Supreme. He won, oh shit, what did he win? He won like a runoff where like he's just a trippy dude. He was Are cool. you a political is, is it a political show? Oh, not by a mile. <laughs> <laughs> we just talk shit about whatever's in the news and just crack jokes. Uh we've we've had some people on. We've had uh who else is it? The guys had on uh what's this dude's name? He they have an antivirus named after him. Norton? Not Norton. Uh Fuck. They, he he had a Showtime show where like he was he was like fucking around a lot. He was in, like not Thailand. He was in some island and he like murdered a dude. Shit. He's a billionaire. Uh, McAfee. John McAfee. McAfee. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was in there for that one, but they booked him. And then usually we just cross promote with the other shows there. We'll have co we'll, we'll have comedians on every once in a while. We had Shane Smith on a, a couple weeks back. Cool dude. Like we get whoever we can find, and we just have a good time with him. We try to get him as comfortable as we can, and that's it. Has Ron ever come on with you? No, nah, we haven't been able to book uh, Ron. That's not my uh, that's not my uh, league right there. Uh, that would probably be Stanley would have to go through that to get him. But like he's busy too. Like Ron, man, bless him, dude. He's he's back doing stand up and shit. Yeah, he's yeah. blowing up doing that he's, too. He's doing like he's. I, I'm not. Sure, I know he still does those interviews too, and he's probably the best at it in the business. Oh, he does the uh, town halls. Yeah, he, Un he does um, the unmasked. He's just uh, yeah. to hear him is a fucking master's class. Fucking the credit card company should have him do those shits. He's just great what at it. Fez? Whatever happened to him? Uh he's in. Uh, I don't want to talk out of school. I'm not too up. I know he's in Florida. He just had a uh, another heart procedure. He's doing all right. Uh, 
he's on Bennington every once, I think, every other Friday. So, he, you know, he, he keeps busy, but he had to pull away a little bit, health reasons and whatnot. In the early days, that was always a good lineup when you had uh, Opie and Anthony followed yeah. by Ron and Fez. Those were, I think those were classic radio. Yeah, it was on uh, NEW. And I got hooked more on radio because of those guys. I was never really a Stern guy. Not that I hate Stern, you. Same, you same thing here, man. Yeah. You don't like Stern, either one of you guys? I, I like I, Stern. I appreciate him. But, like, I never really felt connected to Stern. Yeah. Like, I always felt like you were just listening to Stern when you when you listened to his show. Yeah. When you listened to Opie and Anthony or Ron and Fez, you kind of felt like you were in the room with them. Yeah, they were great felt at that. more of a connection to listening. To, listen, if it wasn't for Opie and Anthony, I would – oh, here we go. I'm going to throw you a softball, Jeff. If it wasn't for Opie and Anthony, I would not be a comedian right now. Mm. It's the truth. Can you tell us how you got started in comedy? You you didn't enter a contest or anything, did you? No. What I'm saying is because of the traveling virus <laughs> com comedy series, you know, I was so yeah. invested in comedy and loving comedy and stuff like that. I went to so many of those shows. And then when I heard the Bill, the, the infamous Bill Burr Philadelphia. Ah, rant, that's a yeah. great one. That was, I think that was the trigger point where I said, Jesus, I think I could, I could probably do this at some point. And then obviously it was the next year I, I started. But. It's funny that you, when you said that, because one of the things that kind of started the wheels turning in my head was it wasn't a, an Opie and Anthony show. It was vaudeville. It was, it was, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was it wasn't vaudeville. I'm not that old. It was, um, it was a Stern show. I was down in Florida. Uh, and uh, the, we went out one night and, you know, we wound up going to see Stern and he had, uh, he had all these awful comedians, like all comedians from the show. The only one who I thought was good was uh, Bob Levy, you know, mm, was, a good friend of all of ours. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and as I'm watching, like, you know, if these guys are playing a theater, it's like, uh, maybe maybe I can do this. And then it took me a couple of years later and then I wound up uh, getting into it. And, if, and another, you know, a guy who you mentioned, my very first time on stage, I did an open mic over at uh, at Eastville and Nate Bargatze and um, Dave Smith happened to be there. Nice. And afterwards, they we the three of us, we went out, Nate, Nate took me out to a cabin. You know, cabin was across the street and Dave and um, Nate uh, and I, we, we got wasted and Nate gave me um, a real history and a real lesson and was my mentor in comedy for the first year in. Mm -hmm. And remember, he got me a gig doing 10 minutes that night. Um, I had five minutes worth of material and burned through it in about three. And you still and do. Sweat, and, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I haven't grown since You're then. You're a quick finisher, huh? That's, a, that's still a thing. That, well, that, that, yeah, and we, and we were talking about sex. Um, no. <laughs> no, but. But I mean, it's, it's a small world, like this comedy community. And and, like, and I think a lot of the stories do kind of like uh, interact, you know. Sure. We, we and, and you know what it is? It's like you hear people's, you hear people's names. And like, I can remember I, I was on an old radio show years ago and I had Dave Smith on. And this is way before, you know, everything blew up with, with gas and with, and with Legion of Skanks and stuff like that. And I just, I just knew him as a libertarian guy. Yeah, yeah. So we had booked him as a libertarian guest because at the time the the other host of the radio show was a a very big libertarian proponent, like a a real mark for libertarian. So like we were trying to get that point of view too. But again, that was ten years ago. So when you start hearing all these names, I've heard your name, Johnny, for a fucking million years, and we've interacted sure. a couple times on Facebook once in a yeah, while yeah. and stuff. And I see your shit, you see my shit, but it's like it really is, even though it's a gigantic community as far as comedy and radio and podcasts, now that every fucking comedian in the world has a podcast on top of all of it too, yeah. it really is very, very big, but insanely small all at the same time. Yeah, it's like a, it's a good little fraternity though. That's why I like recently I've been railing against like fucking Hillary Clinton and fucking Gwyneth Paltrow. They have podcasts. It doesn't make sense to me. They have so many other ways of making money. It's like, yo, get the fuck out. <laughs> Yeah, Wait, you, I, I you get think it. People you, who listen to Hillary Clinton's podcast listen to your podcast. They could be people <laughs> I could fucking flip over and shit. Like, what is she? What is she going to talk about? Her husband cheating on her and her fucking losing the biggest election probably in history. I would definitely listen to that. I don't think you could watch a fucking Hulu special. She has a Hulu special. She's reading you know, books, but you know she's going to be full of shit and she's not going to be candid about anything. She's not human, though. Like, neither is Gwyneth Paltrow. I can't deal with that shit. Uh, like, yeah. I, I want to laugh. I guess some people, like, I, I'll listen to a criminal podcast, like, about murders and shit. And I giggle sometimes. 
That's you know the inside of you. That's a little fucking weird. Well, that is the Ecuadorian in you coming out though. Well, no, laughing at murder. (laughs) Well, no, because it's like uh, the the famous stories with Jeffrey Dahmer where he had that poor guy and he fucking drilled a hole in the back of his head and poured acid because he he wanted to make like a sex slave, like legit. So he zombified the motherfucker. The guy got out of the apartment. The cops caught him in the middle of the street. And Jeffrey came down and said, no, no, my friend's a little fucked up. And the cops said, like, yeah, go back with your friend. The cops like, ah, that's just a gay lover's spat. And he ended yeah. up killing the poor guy. That was a real thing. Yeah, yeah. And that shit made me laugh. It's so more, I could laugh because the guy's dead wasn't going to fucking haunt me. It's fucked up the way he went out, but it's kind of funny. Listen, if you're going to die <laughs> fucking with a, with, a, with a fucking drill hole in the back of your head, run down the street with ranch dressing dripping off your ass, and a cop, <laughs> and a cop looks at you and thinks, this is perfectly normal. Go back inside. Yeah, like, yo, stop being You kind of deserve to die. Like, yeah, it's like shit. <laughs> Remember when we thought that the Nancy Pelosi's tits was the low point of the show? <laughs> hey, guess what? We're only half hour in. <laughs> it's still time. <laughs> John, are you a comedian as well? Uh, I did it for a little while. Well, I, uh, before I interned, I actually got to meet Owen and Jimmy because I was doing shit. Before I even got like into radio, I was like, oh, you know, I, I used to sneak in the clubs and shit. And I, was, I had a, a good time doing it. It's just... Um, I learned a lot because my dad was a performer when I was young. He plays piano. He still actually does. He tours a piece of shit. Uh, he plays piano, whatever, and bars, whatever. But, like, you get caught up, like, there are gigs sometimes where they can't pay you. And mind you, I wasn't, like, fucking selling out rooms or whatever. If I got, like, mid-card, I'd be happy. But the guys couldn't pay you. They're like, oh, hey, kid, here's some drugs or here's some booze and shit. And, like, you can't live like that. So, point where my friends are like, dude, you're going to die. Where do, you, where do you get that gig? You know, you get drugs? Oh, yeah. You, I used to get yeah. hooked up all the time and shit, especially mm-hmm. once the internship. Uh, like, I never plugged any of my gigs when I was interning because it's like, you know, I, it would be nice because I would have gotten more people and shit, but I wasn't doing bringer shows either. So it's like, ah, eh, if I'm going to get fucked up, let me do it on my own thing. But oh, like, yeah. if you worked a certain club, like there was a certain, I'm not going to name it because I think the guy's still active, but the club in the Bronx I used to work, it be like my home base. I trash it out. And the guy... Like for the two years I was there, I don't ever remember him putting a dollar in my fucking hand. But yeah, you know, there'd be something to smoke or something to toot or whatever. And it was like, eh, this ain't for me. Like, you I remember see doing, in the bathroom, yeah. I remember doing a bringer show one time at the old Laugh Lounge yeah. on the Essex Street. In Essex Street, yeah. Yeah, it was a great little club. And, you know, I was very, very new. I was maybe not even a year in, maybe a year in. And I, uh, I brought nine people instead of 10. And the the booker, who was a female, yeah. um, pulled me aside and berated me for five yeah. minutes, saying I shouldn't even be giving you any time because you're required to bring these amount of people. Blah blah blah. Was but, the place you know, packed though? What's that? It was, was jammed. Was- it was jam packed. Right. So yeah. You know, and she started bitching me out, and of course I'm new, so I can't. You know, you don't recover that well from that stuff. Yeah. But I made a point that night. That was the last bringer show I ever did. Yeah, it's so hard. I, went, and I, I respect the kids that do the balking, man. Like, it, oh, I could you, never. You, you got to love it to do it. Like, that's how you start out. Like, the uh, High Comedy Club on 40 Deuce, I used to do shit down there. And, you know, every once in a while, you'd have to do it. Sure. But it, it's it's rough because especially with tourists and shit, like, you can't make goop jokes to a Chinese person because they get offended really quick if they understand the language if you're lucky. Right, exactly. So it's, it's always, like, weird shit. Like catcalling actually worked. I don't know if it would work nowadays, but catcalling always used to do the trick for me and shit. That was really <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, you're a little you're a little more smooth than Jeff is. You know, like I, I can see you going like, "Hey, mommy, why don't you come over here and check out this show?" And Jeff would be like, "I would really appreciate if you would come to see my show upstairs. It's a two drink minimum, and the tickets are only twenty dollars a piece." <laughs> Why do no. I gotta sound like Rob from 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 R- that Raymond show? <laughs> <laughs> you wish you had that success, but listen, that, that whole that whole bringer mentality—it's um, some of it's really hard. But look, we got a good me and Jeff have a good friend, Matt Bridgestone, yeah. and this dude works Atlantic City. This guy walks up and down the boardwalk all day. Selling all tickets. those guys, all those every guys. one of them. Buddha, you gotta have uh, that energy, man. You, Zach, got, Gary, Buddha, Mike, Mike Merck, Zach, uh, uh, yeah, Gary what's, Garcia, what's, all these guys. What's the, what's the, what's the PD? Yeah, PD, I mean, these guys, guys are just guys. literally walking around because, like, I was down there in a casino, uh, like last year with me and another comic friend of mine, and we were just stumbling through Tropicana. And without even seeing us, they were like, Hey, comedy show tonight. And I looked up and I looked at the guy, 
He's like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing here? Like we were just, you know, we started talking. Well, these guys are doing that for eight, 10 hours a day, yeah. then going up and performing. So look, man, I don't, I don't fault anybody for their path on comedy. No, 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 way, man. Any way you, you got to do, do it. it. Yeah. And then like, Never. yo, I, I think you have more passion. There's a little bit more hunger because you're legit starving and you have to find souls to bring in there. Sure. Right. So, and I feel like once you hit the stage, you, there is no tide. You can't be tired. Like, and you're just going to fucking go for it. And sometimes you're not going to hit. That happens. You might have an off night. But, yo, nobody's going to be like, yo, the guy got fucking asses in seats, though. Do you guys, do you guys remember the old Joe Franklin Comedy Club? Yeah, I do. I didn't, I would, sure. I didn't, uh, I think it was just closing when uh, I started. When I remember one of the first shows I ever did, was maybe six weeks into comedy. Yeah. And, um, this guy, Matt Nagan, booked the show. And Matt and I became uh, friends at, uh, later on. But he books the show. And I said, I could probably bring about nine people. I think I wound up getting three people to come down. And I said, listen, you know, I'll, I'll go outside. I'll, I'll balk. And I'm, I'm balking. And I got, I got people into the, into the, the room, right? right? And then and there was this other comic who comes over to me. And now, remember, I'm six months in and six weeks in. And yeah. I'm very, very Staten Island. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you're not going to be able to go on tonight. And I'm like, why is that? He yeah. goes, well, you said you were going to bring nine. You only brought three. I was like, yeah, but I balked in all these people. Really, without me and this other guy, you know, you don't have a show. Yeah, sure. And so the guy persisted. So now Matt comes out. And now I'm getting a little pissed at this guy. And, and I finally go, I snap. I go, Matt, I go, check your boy. Because if you don't shut him up, I'm going to break his fucking jaw. And I'm <laughs> fucking dead serious about it. Okay. And I, you can see Matt pushing the, the guy back and saying, don't worry. You'll get up. You'll get up. I did. I went up. I did my six minutes. And, you know, it, you know it, it's, it's like, I think that may have been the last, the first and last time I ever really balked. Is it, 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 it you know, I, I respect the guys that do it. I mean, Hell it's, yeah, it's all hard, I sh- man. I shut one of them up one time in Times Square because you know how they, they blast you. Either go on one of those bus tours or they always, they, you know, Louis C.K. is going to be performing tonight. And I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. And I go, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm good, man. Oh, you don't, you don't like comedy shows? And I go, no. <laughs> I, mean, I said, I said, no, I'm a comic, man. I'm, I'm off tonight. Man, you ain't no comic. And I pulled out my oh. phone and I showed them the flyer for me playing the Borgata the next week for the whole week. Uh. <laughs> and he looked at me like, I fucking raped his mother. Like it was the worst <laughs> fucking thing I ever could. Because like these guys are fucking hustling, man. I'm but saying they didn't even like try to flip it. Like yo, you think you help a brother out? Nothing like that. You one did one time. Yeah, yeah. One, one did. He was like, yo, who who books that shit? I'm like, look, dude. It took me seven years to get into that motherfucker. Uh, yeah, you think man. I'm gonna get some random fucking asshole next to an Elmo? But no, uh, <laughs> but no. The good shit too is like because of Facebook. At least in your, like a lot of guys' cases, not that I want I'm not going to name drop it because I might forget somebody, so that's weird. But, like, with you, like, I've seen you do, like, you started off, like, in, in Jersey. There are a couple kids in Jersey. You you have the show now. And, by the way, the shit you did during the pandemic was fucking good. Thank you, man. Like, you motherfuckers was in, in that crib losing their minds and shit. I'm like, yo, I can't do this. I can't do that. But, like, you know what? I put it on a Wednesday. You fucking do, taking shots, putting on tunes and shit, just having a good fucking time. So that's always appreciated. But now, like, you got cruise gigs and shit. You had cruise gigs at a point, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, everybody's path is different. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you work at it. Well, yeah, Jeff does the Staten Island Ferry every other Tuesday. (laughs) You know, I I do it for free. I I give back to the community. I do it for free. (laughs) That's what's up, If you ever hear people jumping off the ferry, (laughs) you kind of know why. Go down, Jeff, Sean. When that guy was harassing you, why don't you just tell him, hey, you know, you're a famous comedian? (laughs) I've, I've done that already. Oh, you've done oh, it. Yeah, this, is, this is a callback to, to a story he told last week. Yeah, I, I, I got better concert story. tickets because I was drunk at a concert and I said, uh. listen, I need better seats because I'm a famous comedian. And the girl bought it and she gave me fucking better seats. <laughs> Yo, but here's you the thing. You know what the it. fucked up thing is? I don't get, I, I never get recognized. <laughs> No, you but know, it was funny that wasn't it uh, funny that 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 person who gave the tickets then went back to the boss and said, "I just gave tickets to Chaz Bono." And <laughs> well, that's the thing. Well, that's the, well that you you know that because I mean my former intro I used to always intro the show saying, "Do you ever think you'd see Chaz Bono doing comedy <laughs> here?" Blah, blah, blah. I think that's a great opening joke. 
it, it is, but he's kind of out of the out of the limelight now. But like, I never really get like. Re- I mean, some once in a while, someone will say, "Hey, I've seen you at a show." Blah blah blah. Yeah. But like one time at a rest stop, somebody kept yelling, "Chaz, Chaz, Chaz," oh, and geez, I didn't like. I wasn't. I don't fucking. I'm paying attention. And he goes, "What the fuck? You too good to talk to me?" Yeah, you. And he started to call out my clothes, and I turn around, and go, "What the fuck's your problem?" And then it, he explained, "I saw you, man." Like, well, oh, that's, that's really up. yeah. That's pretty aggressive. The, the worst, the fucking worst I ever got recognized. I did a a, a benefit show in Mayapack, New York, yeah. on a Saturday. It was a benefit show for some lady who had passed away. Whatever. The next week, I'm going on vacation to the Outer Banks. This is like fucking four years ago, five years ago, and I'm in a. I'm telling you, I am in a po dunk town yeah. in Virginia. I'm, I mean, like, there's Confederate flags, like, there's, <laughs> there's lawn jockey statues, there is, it is bad, and I'm getting gas, and I'm going inside, and, and I'm getting a sandwich, and my buddy says to me, you doing any shows at the club down there, and some guy taps me on the shoulder, and he goes, sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to eavesdrop on your conversation, but um, y- y- are you the comedian from Mayapack, New York, from last week? Holy fucking, shit. Fucking dude was going down from Mayapack to Outer Banks at the same time. We wound up at the same gas station in the middle of Virginia. Wow. Oh, that was one of the weirdest random. things. Weirdest that's things. random. Weirdest things. I mean, and if my friends weren't there, they all looked at me like, like they, you know, your friends don't ever give you any fucking credit for anything. No, hell yeah. You know that's why I mean? they're your friends. They make sure they keep you in check. That's a great, that's fucking yeah, great. My mom, my mom's the same way. My mom's yeah. the same way. She's giving me credit twice. For comedy. <laughs> uh-huh. When I got inducted into the Friars Club, she texted me from awesome. the Friars Club and she was like, okay, this is big. And then she texted me two weeks ago when we had the guy from General Hospital on the podcast. And she was that. like, yeah, we had a, a he's named Cobra Sean Kai Kanan. And, and Sean Kanan from Karate Kid. Oh, Club shit. Like dope, that. man. So we had him on and she was like, this is amazing. I think you're really starting to, I'm, I'm not going to watch any more of your shit. I just want you to understand that. <laughs> but, I mean, you had the guy from General Hospital. Uh. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Once in a while, you like a little recognition, but for Jesus Christ, man. No, I get recognized at bar nights. That's about it. I, I did a St. Gennaro one time. Just I took my mom to St. Gennaro, and there were a couple of Running Fest fans. I was like, hey, bro, shut up. I've never seen my mother so proud. She's like, yo, that's you great. Actually, she's like, yo, people actually think you're funny, huh? That's nice. I was like, shit, thanks, mom. That's, it's that's, a good yes. feeling when you, get, uh, <laughs> when you get recognized. I remember when no, I the feel Irish weird thing. about it, man. I, yeah. I feel real weird about it. I'm not like, it's nice when people say, hey, like, I'll go up to you, shake your hand, you know, keep it moving. I've met yeah, people that, get- like, if you don't recognize them, they actually get mad about it. <laughs> I've been in rooms where people get like that, like, oh, I never want to be that. And you also, like, right now, like I tell people, I get scared to, like, ever do anything where I blow up. Because the shit is, if you blow up, somebody's going to be ready to fucking take you down. Oh, yeah, <laughs> big time. That's our, so- that's our society. Uh, you know, we build people up and then we take them down. Um, I remember when the Irishman came out. Yeah, and and people uh, recognized me from the Irishman. Motherfucker, what'd you do in Irishman? Oh, I, I was in three scenes me, in the dude. Irishman. Get the fuck out of here! I don't remember no. you seeing it. What would you oh, do? do you, if you go back and watch the movie, and look, I look completely different in in the movie. My hair is shorter, but you remember when Pacino was kind of yelling at, at the guys, like, "I'm looking at a room full of fucking idiots." I'm the fucking idiot yelling at. No shit, you one yeah. of the business guys? Yeah. Oh, now you're gonna make me watch that shit again. I'm gonna fucking yeah, end up. Yeah, you have nine fucking yeah. hours to waste, Johnny. And then and when, he, <laughs> when he's giving this speech, it's just me and Al on this. You know, I call him Al. Um, it's just me oh, and Al, yeah, you guys. Yeah, there's a couple of scenes in there. I think you'll. Uh, I think you guys appreciate this. I don't think I've ever told this story on the air. This is actually pretty funny. <laughs> um, I was very early on into comedy, so this is 2008. All right. And. I've always had balls. Like I put myself in situations that are, I, I was not ready for. Yeah. So I emailed Jim Norton and I said, Hey, I'm an up and coming comic. You're doing a book signing out in Ridgewood, New Jersey tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night. Why don't you let a new up and coming comic do a few minutes before your signing? No, you didn't. Oh, I did. Uh. So I think I was two to three months in. Didn't even pay any attention to it. Now I'm going to the gym, right? I pull into the gym and I just close the door and my phone rings and my buddy Pete, who's a huge ONA fan, says, yeah. bro, are you on the way? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, don't fuck with me, dude. You're on the way because I'm going to leave right now. I go, bro, what are you fucking talking about? Yeah. Apparently, Jimmy says on the show, yeah, come to my book signing tonight. I got an up and coming comic who's going to do a few minutes 
at my no, show. Don't know, don't know if how wow. good he is, blah, blah, blah. I go, Pete, don't fuck with me because I got to fly up there. I, went, I was like an hour away from that place. He goes, I'm not kidding. Go. I fly up there and I see Club Soda Kenny. Oh. So I go to Kenny and I go, uh, yeah, I'm the comic that's uh, going to do a few minutes. And he goes, do your act. <laughs> so oh, I Kenny. had to do my entire act in front of Kenny. And he right. goes, don't let Mr. Norton be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, fuck. Okay, so now I'm shitting myself, right? So now it's a room full of o and assholes, you know? Yeah. Just pure assholes. So he comes up and he's like, uh, Mr. Norton's going to be out in a few minutes. There's a comic here who's going to do three or four minutes to entertain you, Sean Morton. Now there's no microphone. All he has is that little table mic yeah, that's yeah. on the little bass. So I'm holding the table mic like this, <laughs> right? And yeah. I had stupid fucking jokes. You know, I'm doing Sarah Palin jokes and stuff like that. First joke gets an okay chuckle. Second joke gets a little less. The third joke gets nothing. And one of these fucking animals takes their phone and you hear the car crash noise oh. that they used to do. Oh. And at that point, I walked out. I was done. I mean, I was done with my time anyway, but I was yeah. just fucking done. Uh, and then at the end of the night, I mean, I get the book and I go up to Norton and, he, and Kenny tells him that he, you know, I'm the guy who did the, the, the few minutes. He goes, what the fuck would possess you to even think of doing this? And all I said to him was, when you were starting, if Carlin did a book signing, would you not want to do time in front of him? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but I'm not a fucking moron. <laughs> and then uh, that was it. No, but Jim, a wait? lot of How people did know you that? wait to tell that? story we're almost 40 episodes in you just <laughs> found the fucking story well now. because we got a guy who has the xm opie and anthony ron and fez connection oh, and it just uh, and it just sparked a memory and a lot of people know jim a jim's a fucking story. great guy man he really is uh, he's uh like every once in a while he'll like send me a happy birthday and shit which is well like, oh hey thanks jim you don't think of somebody like a jim norton would remember you but then he does and shit it's nice he responds back if you email him and shit too yeah, he does. And that's one of the things that was different about those comics. Like, I think when you went on Stern, it, not that it was a different level of comic, yeah. but it was more of a pure national comic that was going on that was kind of all over the place. And these guys were centrally based in this area. And I've, I mean, Jeff is the same way. We, we've um, both been very lucky to work with most of those guys that were on that show. You know, yeah, Stern, and, Stern broke in some guys, but I don't think to the end of the to uh to the day I died, I don't think anybody did more for comedy like breaking in new guys. Old name Ron and Fez has broken a lot of no guys. question. There's no like, question. There's about no it. like nobody. You know, Patrice was great. First time I ever heard him though. O and A. He born in Kevin Hart. First time I ever heard Kevin Hart. O and A. And then like you know, it, it's a it's a long like fuck, it's like a Schumer. coaching trend shit. Yeah, dude, Amy Schumer, Bill Burr. Bobby Kelly, uh, Florentine, uh, Voss. Rich Voss, yep. you know, uh, uh, who's the, even Louis was on the show a lot too. I mean, Louis yeah. was big at that point. Louis but, was and there. to an extent, newer comics like uh, who are out now, like Mark Norman and Mike Cannon. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yep. they've, they've carried on towards like the Jim and Sam show, but sure, they're, they're kind of keeping that going too as far as keeping comics relevant and keeping them in the eye, especially during times like this when, you know, we, we're doing these ridiculous shows just to keep our names out there. And, and they're, they're really helping out comics a lot, which I think is, is a real benefit to, to the comedy world too. I know you, uh, I did, I, I saw a picture of you, Sean, where you did, uh, you did a gig out in a parking lot on the back of a, a pickup, right? Me and Jeff did. How did you guys, like, how did you guys dig that environment? I've had, I've had people tell me like, it's different, but it's, it's, it's a little bit more laid back and you feel better with your material shit. I don't no, know I want, I wanted to actually blow my fucking brains out. That really? Night. Well, well, um, how hot was it that day? It was well. I well, just so you know, Johnny, I was the headliner that night. Nice. And, uh, All right. <laughs> but uh, no, it was. It, it's so weird because like people don't understand what goes into comedy. Mm. There are a million different things that uh, contribute to a good comedy show, and just for the simple thing, you know, we had everybody in their car, with the exception of two people in the front. Yeah. That had it that brought their chairs. Um, it was a first date for those people too. If you it was a first date. Oh, okay. so but we had probably twenty, twenty-five cars. Everybody's sitting in their cars, and the and the 
audio is going through their car stereo through an FM modulator. Oh, like a fucking uh, drive-in situation. Like a drive-in, yes. Okay. So, but you're not hearing any applause. You're hearing car horns. Oh, man. Kind of like what Biden's been doing, like when he was doing the drive-in stuff. I got to like lie. Pets. When I watch that shit, it feels very autistic. It's, it's more autistic than artistic. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, listen, we've been doing what we have to do. I mean, yeah, Jeff, fuck Jeff yeah, has done dude. tons of these shows. I, I get, look, I make fun of Jeff a yeah. lot. Mm. He is one of the hardest working people I know as far as comedy goes and nice, will do anything. So. I'm more of a snob. Like, I, I will <laughs> No, I, it's the truth. I mean, I'm yeah. just one of those guys that, like, uh, I, I won't. You know, I'm not going to do a fucking show in Central Park. I'm not doing it. Jeff will do it. You know, Why wouldn't you do a Central Park show? Though? That's pretty, that's a big fucking thing, man. I, no, they're not big things dude. because especially early on um, with all the New York City regulations, you couldn't use microphones or anything. Uh, I'm in the city um, about three times a week. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're doing shows like on patios and stuff. I mean, if you went, if you saw the show, it's like an indoor show. It's a great, great show. Um, but there are certain shows like I, 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 even there, I kind of draw the line. I'm not going into parks and, uh, and doing that anymore. I won't do that. I mean, you feel like Socrates. You feel like. Well, I want to say like, what if it was like a comedy festival in the summer and shit, like well, after that's COVID different. and shit, like would that's you do different. that? That's different. All because right. you know, people know what they're going for. Like, like yeah. I'm doing a show Saturday. It's outdoors, and I've done it before. We mm. sold it out. We sold it out two weeks beforehand, right? Nice. But it's under tents, and people are, are comfortable. They're distant. They know what they're coming for. They got yeah. food. They got drinks, blah, blah, blah. So I'm doing it again this Saturday. And again, it's sold out. But these people know what they're going I'm for. Doing, yeah. We've had shows. You know, I've seen some of these shows where people are like, I can't tell you where it is. Um, send me a DM and then I'll tell you where the info for the show is. I'm old school. I promote yeah. my shit. I put flyers up. I get people to come. I got people. Look, I, I'm doing the same fucking act for years. I throw yeah. new jokes in here and there. But look, a lot of people are coming to see me multiple times because they enjoy either coming out. They enjoy my dumb act or whatever it is. Mm. But it's I'm so used to the standard of comedy where you're going into a room. There's proper seating. There's lighting. There's four walls. Because yeah. not for nothing, the sound bounces off the wall. Oh, yeah. that. Yeah. But like the crowd that you got at at the gig where you guys were outside on on the truck, they knew what they were coming for. You didn't get like, oh, of course. oh I'm a fan. Did. Yeah, it wasn't like a gorilla show where like you know we, yeah. we blasted people, which people are doing that too. People are driving up and down the streets in New York in freaking pickup trucks and they're telling yeah. jokes on the fly. Like, how do you tell a joke? I haven't even heard about here? that. No shit, that's actually a thing. Yeah, I've seen. How does that work though? You just get pop, they just pop up in front of places and people. Well, there's a crowd, maybe where there's a line for something, and they'll yeah. tell. They'll, but Sean, I want to uh, go back hmm. to your point that you know um, there are there are reasons why people can't uh, promote shows and and they have to be secret shows is because the SLA in New York is really like being scumbags and you know trying to shut down places and and you know uh invite you know the the owners of these these bars and places are a little uh concerned they, you know just don't want to bring attention to it yeah, so get fine uh, yeah so so everything is kind of like huh. underground there's more like there's more shows going on i can tell you some places uh that you know some very very popular places that are doing shows yeah okay? I know. but I they, know too. okay so, so you well, can't because really, i've heard in uh, in, in jersey like i know uh, a couple guys were saying they were renting out vfws at one point well, during, yeah, I mean, that, that's normal to begin with, you know. No, but I'm saying like they, they, where they fucked up was like usually you can get a decent sized crowd of your W, depending on what part of Jersey you're in. But they was like, yo, the like the owner would have to fucking limit how many people you'd let in. Well, sure, absolutely. But then I mean, like the 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 people that would go and would get a little pissed because they're playing they're paying regular rates and shit to get in. But it's yeah. not like it's like yo. So instead of it being like maybe a, a two hour show with, with talent, everybody's rushed and you might not even get an hour out of everybody. You know, and that's that's where I'm saying there's a million yeah. things that go into putting on a good show. Like I'm, you know, like I said, this show is good Saturday. Next week I'm working uh, my home comedy club in Jersey, which is now open. Okay. You know, working with uh, Jared Freed, Jeff. Where's that? Uh, Bananas. Oh, oh cool. you're working with Jared. Yes. So oh, that's a great show. Yeah, it's gonna be a great mm -hmm. show. And but again, it's 50% capacity. So now I've worked this room a million times. Yeah. It's my home club. I know when that room is packed. I've never had a bad show there. 
Mm. I don't know what I'm going into at this point because when you have 200 people at a show and, you know, a hundred people love your joke. You're going to hear a hundred people. Yeah. 50 people at this show and only 15 like your joke. Yeah. You're going to have some coughs. It, it's that's a, also a rough a night. Tough, yeah. That's also a tough room. Like when you do the, I think like the second show on Saturday and it's not really like sold out and, and, and you have to spread. It, it doesn't have the same energy as like say the Friday show on that early Saturday sure. show is, yeah. is, is always uh, great. Yeah. Like uh, we, we talked about the, the comedy uh, cove. Uh, it's a room that seats about a hundred some odd people and mm-hmm. they're only able to sell about 25 uh, tickets, 25 tickets in a room that, sold, that fits over a hundred people spread out. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah. That fucking place always sells 25 tickets anyway. So what's the difference? <laughs> well, <on> Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> No, on the weekend it's better. They they sell more than twenty five. They'll sell sometimes twenty six. So my question for you two, because you guys are still doing it, and it's a smaller venue. Uh, have you found it that it's like I always want to know this? Do you meet people more that you offend more, or do you have a crowd that you offend less now? Because no it's such a drop off. No uh, one wants to be offended now. I think people who come out want to come out and have a good time. They have a even, good time. Even even millennials. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. But cool. I always I, see I'm a little Jeff is a, a comic that kind of just tells stories and you know I I can be a little more offensive than Jeff yeah. is but I always preface my show by saying look it's just fucking words and if you're if you're an adult and you're sitting there and you're getting offended by words you have bigger problems in your life. Mm-hmm. So I let them know on the front side that you're going to be in for some shit tonight and yeah. Just you're gonna sit there and fucking take it. Because, because to be to, to be fair, right now it's like a golden age in COVID where cancel culture can't come after comedians like that. Ain't nobody recording you right now. You can just work on your material. No, it's goes, not true. It's good. I don't think anybody's gonna come at you now. Like I think if you say the wrong thing, you could. They will. You got people still fucking coming. Fr- I think they're bigger fish uh, to fly. But if, some, but some, like, if something outrageous. Sure. No, but I haven't I haven't heard anybody getting their ass eaten in a while. Well, but. Who, who's going up? That's uh, true. Well, no, because you got uh, you got Dan Soda. He was touring. I think b- by before the end of July, he was already touring again. You had guy like listen. Uh, some Big guys Jenner. are touring, but they're not touring at capacity. And shows are getting canceled left and right. Like I like um, huh. like look look at like a guy like Tim Dillon. Okay, yeah, yeah. Tim Dillon, you know, was promoting all these shows, and then the next thing, then a couple days later, he's canceling shows. It was in the Long Chicago. Island one. Yeah, no, the, the Long Chicago, Island was can- but it was, Long Island Chicago got canceled. Got canceled. Governors. It, yeah, but Chicago, yeah, they all oh, get canceled. Uh. You know, so it's like it, it's hard to maintain touring. It's it hard is. to make a living as a comedian right now, regardless of mm. what level you're at. Listen, you know? my yeah. friend, my friend owns a club in Clifton, New Jersey. It's called Dingbat. Now it's a it's a really popular like hard rock metal club, right? Gotcha. So they got the green light. Now it's a very small uh, performance area, like a beautiful stage. They do comedy there, open mics on Mondays and stuff like that. And yeah. Jameson does a regular show once a month there, but they'd said, look, we're going to do shows here, but now we're going to have seated. Now, when I'm telling you that this place where, where the dance floor is or in front of the stage is no more than fucking 12 by 12. Ooh. So you're putting, you can cram. I've always yeah. had, there's been some big bands there, like Soulfly played there. They had 400 huh? people in there and it was packed. I mean, to the yeah. fucking door. So you can pack now, they're go- now they're going to put little tiny tables in there and they're putting two and four tops there. You're losing the vibe of that. Now, yeah. all of a sudden, they've booked months of shows. The city just declares no live entertainment. They had to cancel every fucking Holy show. Holy shit. Uh, get so out no of open mic, even if it's an open mic, no open mic. Now, this guy owns two bars directly across the street from each other. Dingoes and Dingbats. Dingoes is a bar. Dingbats is a bar with a performance center. So yeah. why do you keep the one place open, right? You have your bar across the street for people yeah. to make money. He's keeping that place open for entertainment. And now you book all this shit. You're paying somebody to book everything. You put all this money into promotion, into, into advertising, all these things. And then all of a sudden, eh, it's okay. Can't do it now. So it's it's Damn. it's so hard to find places. Like I have, look, I have the next three weekends booked. After that, I have nothing. You have no idea. I have nothing. Well, hopefully, you know, shit picks up because the holidays is coming up. And fuck it, people get depressed. Especially now, people might be depressed. You might get more bookings, man. Well, I think that I think what's going to happen in the next few weeks is we're going to hold see- out hope that these lonely fucks get really suicidal and they I- need a <laughs> more than us. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> but I think we're going to see a lot more of uh, corporate stuff. 
in the next yeah, month. Yeah, hopefully. You know, so, corporate yeah, Christmas man. stuff because a lot of places aren't still open, so they're doing these virtual Zoom shits, and that kind of fizzled out a little bit. But I'm seeing more of it coming. Did Did you guys uh, I, I, I got, enjoy got doing the Zoom shows in November? Yeah, we did. I, I've done a couple. I know Jeff's done a bunch of the Zoom did shows you, too. Did you it's guys like different. it though? Uh, yeah, everybody says it's yeah, like. Fine. Uh, it's weird. You it's like fine. it because you're not used to hearing people fucking laugh at your jokes anyway. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm, I'm in my own. I'm in my element. You're, you're, yeah. you're in the fucking zone. Yeah. You're in the zone. Yeah. No, it's weird, Sometimes, dude. It's really weird. Yeah, I've had a couple where like you're telling your jokes and that people were muted because you can't have nine conversations going on at the same time. And then I did one where like they kept the mics on and I'm telling my joke and I'm going into the setup and you're hearing some guy go, yeah, can you send me the McNamara report? I know it was due mm-hmm. last week. Mm-hmm. So it's, ah, like, it's like virtual heck you know what i mean it's, ah. just, it's just fucking horrible i think just like anything there's an art to doing uh, a zoom show i think you do have to do some type of zoom crowd work i think it gets people vested i think it brings people into yeah. into the show and has them pay attention i think the biggest difference between doing a regular set on a zoom show and and uh, a live show is a zoom show 10 15 minutes tops yeah because i remember at one point they had like a zoom comedy club and like the they still do yeah but the guys at gas were killing it it was like yo what the fuck i was like yo people got to make their money and shit i guess i don't know i I, listen there's a lot of you know what it is too it's not even about the lack of going out it's it's people's fears of going out so yeah. they'll they'll stay home and spend five dollars and log onto a computer and see somebody talk to them and laugh at them. So I understand oh. that too. And then there's the flip yeah. side where I'm booking a show and you know we're sold out two weeks ahead of time. So people, there's two to- total opposite yeah, ends of the different. spectrum. You know, some people are just terrified of going out. Like my friend, who uh, you know one of my dear friends, she booked me on the show, and she does wedding officiating. Right. So a lot of comics do that too. I do it as well. She texted me and says, are you available on this day? And I go, yeah, for what? She goes to marry some friends of mine. I said, well, why aren't you doing it? Well, I'm not going inside. And I'm like, oh, all right. You know, this is a person who goes from home to work and work to home and any comedy she's doing is outdoors. So she's paranoid about it. Me. uh, all right, I'm going to go to this place. I'm going to go, do you, do you? Good, kiss her, yeah. give me my money, and I'm going to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like there's so many different variables now, too, with even not just with comedy, it's with, with society. Just life in general. Yeah, you're right on that. And yeah. it's everywhere, too, dude. Uh, I, I, uh, when I went to go see my wife recently, they have COVID out in Ecuador, and she's like everywhere else. But it's like I had to, like, literally gear up just across the street to go to the fucking supermarket, and they take the temperature, and it was only one family member at a time. Wow. But, like, if you went with your wife and kid, they'd have to just wait in a car, wait home and shit. And it's just weird. Like, crime out there does not stop for anything, which was good. Like, I needed a little bit of crime around. Like, all right, I'm, I'm where I need to be. <laughs> like, they're not going to mug me. I'm bigger than everybody over there, so it's fine. <laughs> shit, but it's like yeah it's a, it's gonna be weird but like hopefully this shit you know they figure this shit out soon and everything can just get back to normal because like I, I think about the young comics that are like trying to come up get the material out there it's got to be fucking murder on them too sure like what do you well, one thing i said to to my friends is that you got to see a lot of comics drop off and what the reason why is because mm. uh just to see an example like you have a big room uh Here's just an example. Like I can I can headline a club, yeah. locally, or Pennsylvania or something like that. Because I'm not a big draw, but like they know that I've worked my way up and stuff. So I've worked my way up to headline. Now these clubs are getting infiltrated by the huge comics. Like so, just say if I'm going to work the comedy works in Bristol, Pennsylvania. I've been headlining there for four years, right? Yeah. So now, let's just say, out of the blue, Keith Robinson wants to come in and headline. Well, he ain't, they ain't picking me over Keith yeah. Robinson. So Keith's going to do the headline. I may be offered the fucking feature spot. Then the feature who has worked so many years to stop coasting and going up to feature, he's going getting bumped down to, yeah. to host the show. He's going back. Now all these hosts that are just getting their feet, you know, their, their feet wet and, and they're green and they're still learning all the chops and stuff like that. Where yeah. are they going to work? So it's a whole domino effect. Yeah. You know, I see I see so many clubs having these amazingly big names that would never play there any other time except now. Because mm. you know what? They still got to eat too. Yeah. So it, it is going to push a lot of people out of comedy. I do feel that. But I Shit. think the people that Man, are good enough. Like that. 
yeah, the people that are good enough are going to stick around and yeah. eventually it's going to come around and eventually it, it's going to be, it's a huge reset. And it's also a very big uh, trim in the fat. I think a lot of, a lot of part-time comics are going to go away and they're going to talk about when they used to do it. Yeah. But comics like me and Jeff who are like, you know, we're good You're comics. Yeah. We're good comics. You know, we're not at that Netflix level yet. But we're like, not a hobby either for you guys. You guys legit fucking do it. Right. You know, this uh, was my career. You yeah. know, this is what I do. This is what I was going to do for a living before fucking COVID. Yeah. You know, Jeff will tell you, I stopped, I stopped a fucking day job of 20 years on, on February 14th One because my later. schedule was so packed. You know, I got laid yeah. off and I'm like, you know what? This is fine. I'm totally yeah. fine because you know what? I got every weekend and midweek days booked out through fucking July. I went out and did the cruise and yeah. then everything died. Yeah. So it's going to, it's a huge, it's going to be a huge reset for people. It's going to be getting back into the swing of things, you know, sending out the emails and not hearing back for seven months from these fucking animals, you know, the way it is. (laughs) But listen, it's a fucked up time. I'm glad we had you on. I want to end the show asking you three questions. All right. Number one, when do you think the election is going to be called? Like everything done after court cases and everything, or just like the shit just, going on now? Just the shit going on now. Probably by 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 tomorrow Friday, I want to okay. say, because everybody's like, "Oh, we're just wrapping up." The the one that weirds me the fuck out is Nevada because they got a bunch of people that can count and shit. I don't know what the fuck's taking so long. Antiquated systems is what it comes down to. So goddamn crazy. Number two, where can people check out High Society Radio? That's on a Gas Digital Network. We're on at Thursdays, eight p.m. You can use promo code HSR. Or at uh, gasdigitalnetwork.com. Third question. Yes or no answer. You like music? Yes. There we go. We got music done in our podcast today, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out. <laughs> all right, guys. Listen, I think out of all our episodes, this is the least music we spoke about. Yes. I'm sorry about we, that. Bronx Johnny likes music. Okay. So we, <laughs> sorry we about did that. establish that. Uh, all right. Um, all right, guys. Uh, th- hey, listen, thank you so much for coming on. We really do appreciate you. Much time, appreciate guys. having me on, man. That's really Absolutely. awesome. Appreciate it, dude. No, dude, man. You're 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 a good dude. You're you're a great hang. You're 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 a funny guy. I mean, you, we've we've covered some really weird shit on this show today. Um, yeah, I'm, surprised you, I'm, I'm surprised you. I'm surprised you turned off by older titties, man. Yeah, Nancy Pelosi's <laughs> tits. The guy gets drilled. That? Yeah, you know the guy. I shit, titties is titties, man. Nancy Pelosi's tits. A guy got drilled in the back of the head. Jeff was in the Irishman. Norton, Sean bombed in front of Norton. <laughs> and Bronx Johnny has amazing fashion sense by that fucking white T-shirt he's been wearing all afternoon. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some heroin now. And uh, oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you so much, Johnny. Appreciate it. Thank you for having uh, me, guys. Sean, Thanks, I will see you next week on Who's Your Band. Keep subscribing. Keep following. Thank you, Adam. And goodbye, everybody. See you guys later.